Hi, this is Terry at Terry Johnson Creates. And this little video is just to show you about using the line style window and how that tool can help you when you're creating not only print and cut, but any number of creations in your Silhouette Cameo software and studio software. So the first thing I want to do is adjust my design page setting. I'm going to be cutting an eight and a half by, by 11 sheet of cardstock. So I want to come over here and change my workspace to letter size or eight and a half by 11. And you'll see that it automatically adjusts the width and the length here in that preset. If you were using an odd sized piece of paper or cardstock, you could adjust this manually to whatever size you wanted. Now the next thing is because we're going to be doing print and cut, I'm going to come up here to the print and cut registration marks. The default that I have set is that these would be off and I'm going to come down here and turn them on for the cameo and you're going to see that they pop up on my workspace. These black marks here, here, and here are the registration marks that the sensor in the cameo will read. And this hatched grayed out area is an area that you need to leave blank. Don't let anything be inside of this area because the cameo needs that space in order to be able to read the registration marks. The sensor will scan that and you don't want anything to be in that area. This red line is your border. Nothing needs to go outside of that either. Okay, so let's get started with our little card. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see better what I'm doing. Let's do it this way. I went the wrong direction. And I'm going to come over here to the left-hand side toolbar and select the rounded rectangle. Using my cursor, I'm going to draw a rectangle that is about four by five, three and a half by four by five, something like that. It doesn't really matter. We can adjust it later. And then I also want to show you that these little rounded rectangle tools here, the little circles here will adjust the corners. But first, before we do that, you're going to notice that if I were to click here, it's going to continue to make rectangles. I know that's frustrating for people sometimes because that's how their defaults are set up. Now you can change your preferences or just simply after you've made the rectangle you want, come up here and click on the select tool again and you're back to a regular cursor. And I'm going to delete that one that I made that I didn't want. Now back to our little circles here on our corner. These circles allow you to adjust the roundedness of your corners. If I want to click on that and hold down my shift key, I can adjust it like this and it will change all four corners. So you can adjust how much curve you want in your corners on your rectangle. So now that I have it about where I want, I want to create an offset as a border. So I come up here to the offset tool and click on offset. When I do that, the default is 0.125, but I want that to be a little bit bigger, not that big. So let's make it about, it was 125, let's make it about uh, 17 and hit enter. Okay, so that gives us a nice little border there between our original line and the cut, what is going to be the cut edge. I'm going to click on this inner line and we're going to turn that into a dotted line by using the line stool, excuse me, the line style window. Now when I do that, you're going to see that a lot of different options pop up and you may not have ever used these before, but I'm going to use this middle one here because it kind of looks like what I want it to be for a little track, like a raceway or a road. So by using these arrows here, I'm going to hold them down. As I do that, you'll see that my line changes and it begins to be thicker and thicker. And so at this point, maybe take it down just a little bit. That's about what I want it to look like because I think that kind of looks like the dotted lines down the center of a road. But I want them to be black. So, nope, not my color fill window, but my line color window. I'm going to select black so that those turn to black. Now, like I said just a second ago, if I were to cut at this point, all of this would cut. But at the end, when I'm finished, you're going to see that we can take care of that. So I'm going to draw another long, skinny rectangle, not rounded this time, about like that, because I'm going to make this be my street. I want it to be colored in, so again, I'm going to select the little icon there, go to my color fill window this time, and make that black. Now I want to create a dotted line down the middle of my road, so I'm going to use my line tool. This time, if I hold down my shift key while drawing my line, it will be perfectly 
straight. No matter where I try to put my cursor, that line will be perfect. Oops, you got to hold on to your um, mouse. And let's try this again, holding down my shift key. Well, not my caps lock, but my shift key. Let's try this one more time. I'm going to hold down my shift key and draw my line tool. So I need to release my mouse before I let go of the shift key so that it will stay perfectly straight. Again, select that, go back to our line style window. I'm going to make it a dotted line again and increase the thickness. So as I do that, that looks about where, mm, that's a little much, let me take it back down, where I want my road line to be. And I'm gonna make it yellow this time Oops, not color fill. I forget that sometimes. Go to line color, and now it's yellow. Now I'm going to bring this down to my road. I'm going to select the line and the rectangle by holding down the shift key. I can select them both and go to my align window. Now when I click on center, that centers that yellow dotted line in the smack dab middle of my rectangle, which is exactly what I want. So I think it looks like a street, don't you? So I'm going to group those together by Command G so that they'll function as one. Now that little um, green circle is my rotate tool. So I'm going to rotate this until it's about like that. Then I'm going to move it and get it where I want it to be on my card. So now my little street is going across my card and all I've got to do at this point is add my text. I'm going to come over here to my text tool and I'm going to change the point that the default is 72 points and I think that's really big. So I'm going to make it down to 24 and I'm going to type in I really like you. Now like I said, this isn't original with me. I am... Um, solve something similar on Pinterest and I'm just copying it and making it my own. Now with this selected, I'm gonna come over here and type in, I wanna use the font Arial Rounded Bold. So that's what it um, looks like. And I'm gonna, again, this time I am gonna use my color bucket and make that text red. I'm going to enlarge it. Let's see, it's a little smaller than I want it. So we're gonna make it something like this. And I'm going to come down and add some additional text on the bottom right hand side. Again, clicking and changing my default or my point size to um, 24. I'm going to type in Happy Valentine's Day. Love Noah. And I'm going to um, select this so that it's center justified like this. <coughs> Excuse me. And again, this time I'm going to go to my color bucket, my color fill window, make that red. But oops, I forgot to get the font that I wanted. So I'm going to do this and make that font match the other. Now I'm going to move this line spacing a little closer together so that, um, oops, let's go this way. Just so it's just a little bit bigger, I mean a little bit closer together. But then I can make the text just a little bit bigger. Oops and move that over here so that it fits nicely right in there. Okay, so now we're done except for, let me select everything by Control A, and I'm going to group it together. Now let me go over here to my cut style window. Remember I said what if I did this, then everything would cut? See these red lines around everything? That indicates that everything would cut. I obviously don't want that. I only want the edge to cut, so I'm going to say cut edge. Now you're going to see those red lines disappear off of everything except the outer edge. So that's exactly what I want in my card. It might still be a little big. 5.142 is a little big. So let me just take it down just a little bit. Yeah, that's a little bit more like what I want. Okay, so now we're all set. I'm going to zoom back out and I'm going to rotate this. I get, go to my rotate window. Do you notice there's two ways? You can either do it by this or like this, because I knew I wanted exactly 90 degrees. And as I place this on the page, I'm staying away from these hatch areas, and I'm going to duplicate this. Let's see, bring this one over here so that it's almost all the way over, and this one, 
Okay, so when I do that, I see that they're too big. Not, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna delete this one. It's not gonna fit on the page and I want it to. So I'm gonna make it a little smaller. And now I'll duplicate it. And now that should fit with no problem, and it does. So I'm gonna Command D to duplicate another one, bring it down here, and I'm gonna rotate that one back so that I can fit three on the page. So now I'm all ready to cut my little valentines. If I, again, if I go to my cut style window, it says cut edge only. Well, I say I'm ready to cut, but I have to print them first. So I would click here for my print and cut. I'm not currently connected to a printer, so I'm not gonna do that. Then once they were printed, I would place them on my mat, send a silhouette, and then I would select my appropriate cut style um, settings for cardstock, and I would print them. And excuse me, I would cut them. So that is gives you a little idea of how you can use the line style window. And I'm going to show you how I printed and taped the cars to the little valentines in the rest of the blog. Thanks!